Hello, hello everyone. It's good to be with you again. Um, it's a very gloomy, rainy day today. I shouldn't say gloomy. I mean, weather is just weather. Not good or bad, it just is what it is. But today happens to be a drizzly, rainy. It's actually a good day for recording a blog because the sun doesn't get in the way. So let's begin. The topic for this week's blog is called Painful Wisdom and Well-Earned Peace. So unless we are a highly advanced soul who has evolved beyond needing to take on another earthly journey, we come here again and again to grow, to learn lessons, to plant seeds of love, and to remember our true identity as a soul. I believe from what I have experienced in my sacred temple within through meditation, that we have a choice. We do have a choice whether to return to the earth plane or not. Normally, once, we, uh, once an incarnation is complete, we need to take some time to assess our previous life and determine for ourselves, with the help of our spirit guides, of course, where we triumphed and where we did not. There's no great tribunal on the other side who will judge us and dish out an appropriate punishment or restitution. The only one who might judge us initially once we make the transition to the other side is us. Of course, after we have assimilated back into our true home, we realize that judgment really isn't helpful. Only a commitment and resolution to learn our lessons a bit better and bring more love to the earth plane the next time. And that will help. We can evolve in spirit without coming to the earth plane. We can evolve in spirit, but it, it's a much slower process than if we take on the enormous challenges on the earth. So eventually most souls make a conscious choice to do it all again. Some of us are eager to jump right back into the fray and tackle another sometimes messy and usually painful life. Others need more time to replenish their energy, especially if it's been a difficult life, and, and decide what circumstances and lessons will be in place during our next go round in the physical world. Just like humans, souls are different from each other, depending on their particular configuration of soul energy. Some are quick movers with a sort of bullish personality as a soul, which makes them act more quickly and contemplate less. Often, this leads to a partnering up with a human counterpart who will be one of two things. Either it will be a mirror image of its soul and tackle big problems often, or it's probably more likely than than that that than a human that the human part of us that we choose has a softer, more contemplative and serene personality that will try to urge its soul to allow it, the personality, the, the human part, to help us by being more mindful and slower to act. In doing so, the bullish soul may sometimes stubbornly find its way into the silence of our heavenly home and listen for the wisdom coming through. Acquired wisdom, while living our lives here from infancy to however long we had pre-planned to remain here, will most likely always come with a cost. And most of the time, that cost is pain. How much pain we endure how deeply it will cut us, and how long lasting the wound depends on a few things. And those things are awareness, consciousness, and our ability to explore the pain. 
explore the pain for the wisdom it holds rather than pushing it away and ignoring it. The pain comes in many forms and the teacher and lesson associated with a particular pain will be unique to the individual soul who chose to endure it. Some of us have seemingly endless physical pain and perhaps even a, a physical disability along with it. Some endure emotional, mental, or even spiritual pain where a soul longs incessantly for a home it can't quite remember, but they know for sure it's not this one. So why is awareness and consciousness important? How does one find it? In order for it to be a useful tool, we need to evolve and grow as a soul. Well, first, I think a lot of it comes from having spent many incarnations struggling through one heartbreak after another until we finally wake up from the illusionary dream of unknowing. We just awaken. Some wee ones, babies born onto this world, come here with a wisdom far beyond how old they are. They just seem to know things that no one here has taught them. And they have a highly evolved level of consciousness and awareness and are most likely a fairly evolved soul. However, make no mistake, all babies born through the birth canal of their mother are closer to heaven during those first few years of life than they might be through the rest of their lives. So those first few years are important. Having conscious and aware parents is a great gift for a newly arriving soul. Parents such as these can encourage and help their children develop their intuition and gifts of spirit right from the start. And in this case, it's most probable that both child and parents are farther along on the evolutionary pathway and are most likely from the same soul group. When adversity strikes suddenly in our lives, it is difficult to try to stay calm and try to understand what's going on and why a particular struggle or pain has descended on our lives. Sometimes our brain, the brain of our human counterpart, has a ferocious amygdala. The amygdala is a part of the brain, it's the primitive part of the brain that reacts and it reacts like a toddler spiraling out of control and can't or won't listen to reason. The part of the human brain that helps balance that is the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that helps us to calm down, to look at our struggle through a different perspective and to reason. However, even that chemical imbalance that a person may have may have been pre-planned in order to really push a soul quite fiercely to awaken to the truth of who they infinitely are. And again, it, an eternal soul born of love. If not, the human soul may spend an entire incarnation staying lost in a sometimes harsh world of, why me? Why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this, and an unending self-pity that follows. As hard as it might be when we suffer, for example, the loss of a loved one, physical, emotional abuse in our relationships, or constant failure as we try to climb the ladder of success laid out by the rules and conditions of the earthly world, there is an answer. And the answer is both simple and hard simultaneously. The simple answer is to respond spiritually, mindfully, and with determination to find the treasure in our pain, the gift within our pain. Even though our hearts may be aching and our tears abundant, 
On the other hand, while overwhelmed with tragic adversity, we may be unable to imagine ever finding happiness or peace ever again. Reacting rather than responding. So reacting with unbridled emotions and feelings will simply stall the process of gaining the wisdom beneath our adversities, possibly in both this lifetime and possibly in future ones as well. Eventually, we all come to understand that staying grounded in our energy, in the energy of our eternal soul, while undergoing the tough lessons in Earth's classroom will help us to see through the darkness and access the light of understanding, wisdom, and truth. Once we acquire that kind of lasting wisdom, a certain peace will envelop us, knowing we can emerge joyfully and joyfully and more wise from any adversity, no matter how devastating it might be. The love that we ultimately are will be front and center in all situations. We will honor our humanness and the emotions and feelings associated with it, but we will always, always have an inner knowingness and profound wisdom that will lead us to safe and peaceful shores. Just like the storm clouds that roll over, kind of like today, that will roll over a clear blue sky and tumble us all about. We know, we know that the sunshine and the blue skies are still there beyond the cloud and will return once the storm has passed. Our lives will always have storms, some small, some catastrophic, but we can always count on God's infinite light to help us weather those storms by calling upon his guidance, protection, and eternal, unconditional love. And our reward will be great wisdom. And this is special too. From that great wisdom, there will be a calling from our creator for us to help others learn the wisdom and truth that we discover through our own pain. And from experience, nothing feels better than that. So I'd like to end the blog with a quote from John Lennon. God is a concept by which we measure our pain. I repeat it. God is a concept by which we measure our pain. And my interpretation is this. The level of pain we experience on the earth plane is in direct proportion to how well we are able to recognize, conceptualize, internalize, and then utilize the wisdom and truth of our infinite and living God. God is not out there somewhere. He lives within all of us and will always be there to wipe away our tears and help us through our struggles. So that's it for me for the blog for today. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a lot to really think about um, when, when we think most of the time we all have this place that we go to when we're in pain through difficult circumstances and we kind of shut down a little bit. But I hope that this blog will help you to see that while you're in the midst of it, you can at least still stay to say to yourself through your tears, through your anguish, through your pain, there's a reason for this. There's a reason that I'm going through this. I know it and I will peel away the layers like an onion, peel away the layers of pain and suffering and, and anger and all the emotions that go along with it and extract from the center the treasure, the treasure, the treasure for our soul and the wisdom to help us move forward on our spiritual pathway and back 
to our true home. So everyone have a wonderful week again. Hopefully we'll have some nice weather and I will see you next time. Might not get a new blog out next week because my husband's whole family is coming in town, into town. So it's going to be busy, busy, busy. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get it done, but there's a chance I won't. So we'll still send out the newsletter, but it might be an older one, which is always, it's always fun to, to read things that you've read before because a lot of times you read it the first time and you got a lot out of it, but then the second time you're like, huh, I don't remember reading that. That's really unbelievable. And you read it again. I do it myself, so I know. So anyway, have a great week. I'll see you next time and namaste.